All right, so now we're going to talk about covalent bonding. And covalent bonding is going to be different from ionic bonding because covalent bonding is going to be where they share electrons, whereas ionic bonding was going to be where they gave one electron to someone else and then they had different charges that attracted them to one another. So covalent bonds are going to be the strongest, and they can be single, double, or triple bonds. So there's a lot of differences there. Um, obviously, the triple bond is going to be the most, the strongest out of all of them, and the single bond is going to be the weakest. Um, but they are the strongest overall as far as types of bonds go. Okay, so there are going to be two types of covalent bonds. There's going to be what's called polar and nonpolar. And what's going to determine whether something is polar or nonpolar is going to be the electronegativity of an atom. So <clears throat> electronegativity, if we define it, is going to be an atom's pull on its electrons, how hard it's actually trying to hold on to them. And I've got a great graph right here to show you um, what that looks like. So this is kind of like a bar graph of the periodic table showing you electronegativity. And you'll probably notice a trend that the, over, the further over to the right and up that you go, the higher the electronegativity. So fluorine is going to be the most electronegative. Now what's going to determine polarity is I like to think of it like a tug of war. So if you have a tug of war where you have two people pulling on a rope and they have equal strength, no one's really going to win. And so that's just like a nonpolar covalent bond. What's going to happen is they're going to have similar electronegativity or pull on their electrons, and the electrons are going to spend time evenly around each of the atoms. Uh, polar covalent bond is going to be where you have different polarity. And what's going to happen, or not polarity, sorry, electronegativity. And what's going to happen is the electrons are going to spend more time around the more electronegative atom versus the other ones. So, <clears throat> um, I believe I have some examples here of, yeah, there we go, of some nonpolar covalent bonds right here. Uh, some of them, actually, not all of them. Um, obviously, hydrogen and hydrogen, that's going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. And that's because they have the exact same electronegativity. Oxygen and oxygen, same thing. You're going to have similar electronegativity. Down here, methane they're also going to have similar electronegativity. So what's going to happen is those are going to be nonpolar covalent bonds, and the electrons are going to go around evenly, right? So if we're going to um, grab my, my bamboo thing here, um, I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So you're going to have, um, let's say, an oxygen. Uh, let's not do an oxygen because that's going to get confusing. Okay, let's do um, hydrogen and hydrogen, right? So they're going to have a bond between each other. And what's going to happen is you're going to have the electrons doing this. They're going to go around this one and around this one in kind of a figure eight. But notice they're spending equal time around each of these guys, okay? That's going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, an example of a polar covalent bond, a great example, is going to be um, water. So let's do water. We've got oxygen bonded to hydrogen. And if we look at the electronegativity over here, oh, why won't it go? There we go. Hydrogen is 2.1, oxygen is 3.5. So oxygen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. And what's going to happen as a result of that is that's going to determine how the electrons are going to spend their time. So since oxygen is more electronegative, if you think about it, um, ooh, that was kind of strange, um, then obviously... I don't know why I can't get red. There we go. Um, what's going to happen is oxygen is going to pull harder on the electrons than the hydrogens. So here's what's going to happen is it's going to say, yeah, let's share it, but really the electrons are going to do this and then go over here a little bit. Same with this one. It's going to go, oh, yeah, let's share. This is cool. And then it's going to go over here way more. So what's going to happen as a result of that is it's going to give the oxygen what's called a partial negative charge. Now let's think about why oxygen would have a partial negative charge. What's the charge of an electron? It's negative, right? So what's going to happen is they're going to spend more time over here, so this part of the molecule is going to have a partial negative charge. As opposed to hydrogen, 
that's going to have a partial positive charge because the electrons are spending less time around the hydrogen. So what's going to happen is that's going to allow it to form associations with other things that have charges that we'll talk about a little later. But that's going to be how um, polar and nonpolar covalent bonds are going to differ. All right. So um, one other thing I wanted to talk about is going to be structural versus molecular formulas. So you can see that both of these right here are going to be formulas for water, but this is actually showing the molecular structure of it, and then this is actually showing the formula, how many hydrogens and how many oxygens, but it doesn't show what they actually look like as a molecule. So that's just a little difference that you'll see here and there. Um, then I've listed here the name of the different types of bonds and then the strength of them. So as you can see, covalent bonds are the strongest, followed by ionic, then hydrogen, then hydrophobic interactions, and then van der Waals attractions and forces. So that's just nice to know like which ones are stronger than others. Um, so in the next one, we're going to get into chemical reactions and how chemical reactions actually work. Um, and that's basically just going to be breaking and forming chemical bonds.